Welcome to The Green Light. I'm your host, Shayla Nees, and I'm so grateful you're listening to my show. On today's episode, I have Shantae Raquel, and we're getting into her world of being a fashion designer. Now, sometimes I may know a title, but I may not know what it really entails. So I had to go to the good old Google, and this is what a fashion designer is. They create original clothing, accessories, or footwear, and they sketch the designs. They select patterns and fabrics, and then they bring the idea to life. And so this whole process from start to finish is truly mind-blowing to me. And I'm so glad that Shantae is going to break it all the way down for us. So let's get into it. We can just kick it off like, well, in the beginning, like growing up, did you always know you wanted to be into fashion? Or do you have any early memories of style and designing things? Yeah, so it's funny. I didn't know I wanted to be into fashion at all. I think at one time I wanted to be a teacher, a guitarist. Just I was like fashion wasn't on the radar at all. But I will say when I was in middle school, it was a show on UPN called Are You the Girl with T-Boz and Chili. And it was a singing Mm -hmm. reality show. And a lot of times before the performance, the contestants would have to use like unconventional materials to create their own costumes and performance clothes. So I, you know, back then this was like, a little over 15 years ago so we didn't have all these streaming service streaming services to like watch stuff so out of almost boredom I would record the episodes as they came on because it was my favorite show and just throughout the week I would just keep re-watching the show in that same episode and before I know it I started following along and doing the challenges along with them from my house like I would grab glue glue sticks feathers glitter anything I could find mm. to kind of recreate these looks so I would say that's like my first memories and earliest memories and it's funny because I do pretty much remember it like vividly like even the high the middle school I went to really small just seventh and eighth grade one hallway so it was not that many people so I was pretty comfortable with like wearing these clothes I created from home to school it, which was kind of outlandish and mm-hmm. I feel like even went further with that because from watching the show I became a huge fan of TLC and I think Ooh, on the TLC tip came out in 92 the year I was born so by the time I was in middle school. I was the only one like still wearing the baggy jeans because I like just discovered them. And meanwhile, that was some of my friends' parents' favorite group. So it kind of made me stand out a little bit. So I would just say building up to those two, just watching the show and then becoming a fan of TLC and using my style to express myself. And that was pretty much the beginning when it first started. Did like your classmates or teachers have any reactions to the clothes you'll make and come to school with? Yeah, it was definitely a conversation starter and I was so (laughs) shy. So it was cool. So I got to know my classmates more. It helped me stand out. And some people wouldn't even know know that I was shy just because I dressed a bit bold. And even my teacher, she had the same reaction. She was like, TLC, they were out during my time. Like, what are you doing? Like, because I was really, I had every album and everything, like all on my binders. So she's Mm -hmm. just like, what's going on? This is my time. So that was pretty much the reaction and I actually love like the crazy looks I would get I, I thought it was cool and I thought it was funny so in a way it was a little bit of a joke in a way just so like ah, I don't care I'm just being me just marching to the beat of my own drum yeah so it seems like maybe like personality wise you were more reserved but your clothes said otherwise and so that really like made more eyes on you in school and so did that kind of carry into like your des- decision to like go to college for design like how did that like from younger your younger years how did that like shape what you wanted to pursue in um in your degrees I would say when I got to middle high school my high school was still pretty smaller than a typical one floor however a little bit more people and instead of being like seventh eighth grade I'm eighth grade I'm the oldest I was in ninth grade with like 10th Mm -hmm. 11th 12th graders so that made me become like a little bit intimidated so I was no longer wearing outlandish styles but at the same time I would still throw my personality in there a mix and throw my personality in the mix a little bit and even at the end of the year where like the yearbook come along and it's like best dressed and all that somebody in the class suggested my name and I'm just like me -hmm. because I didn't think I dressed well at all and that was kind of a shocker because most of my clothes are like hand-me-down so even when I was being like silly and dressing like TLC at the same time I feel like I was 
work with what I got. Like, okay, the knees are worn out on these pair of pants because they're hand me down. So right. I'm gonna stick this right there. So it was just weird that it was like catching their attention. And even at church, I would get compliments on the way that I dressed and the way that I pierced stuff together. And I was kind of like, what do you mean? Like, I just mm-hmm. got dressed because they would ask me questions like, how do you put this color and that color together? What made you decide to wear this? And I'm just like, what are you talking about? I just woke <laughs> up and got dressed. So after a while of hearing it from so many people, I was like, let me take this serious. Let me look into a career. And mm-hmm. I think maybe my junior year, I don't know what made me just say fashion design. That part I cannot remember. But at the same time, I don't think I knew exactly what I wanted to go to school for. But I knew I wanted to go to school and I somehow found Casanova College and they were only like only about two hours away from my home. So I wasn't too far. So I was pretty much like, OK, I'll try it out. I didn't need a portfolio because I did not know how to sew at all before going there. So, wow. Yeah, I was just like, yeah, let's get it. A, give it a shot. I did a little bit of hand sewing before, but never by machine. So I didn't know nothing about patterns or anything. Mm, oh yeah like the cutting and the fabric yeah. and stuff okay like so yeah <laughs> right so like in, so when you were in school you were like glue and cut like you would do like the basic type of like design without the yeah. sewing I will pretty much reconstruct I can do a little bit of hand okay. sewing but other than that I'll get um like a hot glue gun wood mm-hmm. glue and just different stuff like that to stick it together so what were your family like like when you would make these clothes and reconstruct it like did they have like did they encourage you or support you or like did you have any references in your family that were seamstress seamstresses or knew how to sew like like is that kind of like running running in the family yes it does run in the family just a little bit i have a cousin who's a fashion designer and my grandma as well she's um Mm. growing up i remember she would have um thread and needles so now that I think about it I do remember going to her room and doing a little bit of hand sewing and just playing around but it was with her needle and thread and I think she used to make some of my aunts and clothes and dresses for church growing up but yeah for the most part it was just it was a little bit shocking to them because because I would say my style kind of caught them off guard a little bit so they're just like Mm. what is happening why is she dressed (laughs) like this and I remember at one point I saw a classmate wearing like this belt she brought from the store and it was almost like a car belt. And Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, we got an old van in our backyard that we're about to take to the, um, the tow to get towed away. So I took some scissors and I had cut the seat belt and I like wore it as a belt. And I remember like a few relatives was like, what are you doing? Do you need a belt? And I'm like, no, I have belts. Like, I'm just trying to be different. (laughs) So yeah, I was say it caught them off guard a little bit, but yeah, they're cool with it. Yeah, so, like, so TLC is, like, a big inspiration, and I see, like, with your designs now, like, I've been to one of your fashion shows, like, it definitely gives me, like, that 60s, 70s Motown era, like, that classy type of, like, era of dressing. It's, like, is that also, like, a big part of, like, the styles that you're doing now, like, or just music in general, like, you, it's just that era? I would say uh, Motown music is a huge impact. And I usually Mm. would kind of describe that as my aesthetic. I'm always looking to the 60s, the 70s for the glam. Like, I just love everything about Motown and music as well. I always say I'm an old soul. So Mm -hmm. even to get in the mood for collections, sometimes I listen to Motown music in sketch or I just get my Motown music on, put my headphones in and zone out. And then a couple of hours later, I'll start sketching or thinking of ideals or I would watch the movie Sparkle, the original and the remake. Ooh. And yeah, just, I, yeah, I just love the glamour back then. <laughs> Who are your fashion icons from that Motown era? Ooh, definitely Dinah Ross and the Supremes. <laughs> I'm okay. a huge Dinah Ross fan. Anybody that knows me knows that. Like, Yes. Yeah. And that's how we, yeah, we connected right. on that part yes. too. So yeah, I totally get it. Yes. I, I just love her style all the way and Motown I would say I'm also a fan of like the male artists as well like the Jackson Fives when they had those colorful suits with the ruffles I put that on my mood board a lot um who else uh Smokey Robinson yeah. some of his key looks Marvin Gaye with his suits so yeah that's good okay and so like um kind of like fast forward and then like once you were finished with school and you started like you know taking 
taking on different like projects as far as like your styling and getting collections like how how was that process like being like an entrepreneur and like dealing with like post college life like did you have like a nine to five while you were still designing like how was that life uh, for you so at the beginning, I did. So when I graduated from undergrad, I came back home. At the time, I was working at a kid's, kid's museum. So I was just a guest host, and I would do those duties, like which wasn't fashion-related. However, later on, the museum seamstress was out for a while, so I was actually able to take her position. So I was actually in the back for a while. Like One of my friends knew I was into design, and she happened to be talking to the manager, and she was like, oh, Shantae can sew. Like, Shantae can do it. So for a couple of months, I was able like to just be in the back and the sew and to have some of my coworkers as my assistant and tell them like, okay, iron this, pin this. So mm -hmm. that was pretty cool. And then shortly after that, um, I think I stopped for a little bit to just explore freelance. Then, then I decided I did want another nine to five just to be a little bit more comfortable because I was traveling a lot. So I needed to be able to travel and get to where I had to go to. So I will say I, I didn't really have full time just because it was a little bit hard on my schedule. Like I did for right. three weeks and it, it didn't work for me. So I was like, let's try this again. And I began to notice a pattern with my schedule and the fashion calendar and which were, which months were the busiest months. So I worked with that and I would also take on seasonal jobs. And I was like really intentional and diligent with my money. So I knew mm -hmm. seasonal, I'll have like a job. And then most likely after I'll probably let it go. So I would just really save and keep my keep that in mind so I can like work hard while I'm at work and then once that stop I can just go forth with my fashion and just get like really into it that's good so when you would like freelance like how how did you accept a project like if you if someone wanted like a like for you to design an outfit or something for them how do you say yes or no like have you ever turned down someone's idea before oh, I would say I do I, my rule is always if it's taking an emotional toll on me mm -hmm. or if it's just not, I feel like we're just not um, mixed in and it doesn't feel good. Then sometimes I will say no. I will listen to my um, gut instinct or if somebody's inviting me to a fashion show or to some type of event and it's, they're asking like, who's coming with me? And the questions get a little weird. I will really like listen mm -hmm. to that inner voice. and like, I don't need to be here. And I'm going to pass <laughs> on that. So that's mostly what I did. But for the most part, I was pretty, pretty out there as far as like just going for it. I was pretty bold to just run in. Like one day I did a fashion show in Atlanta and I had one in New York City previously, but it got postponed and it just so happens that the show was the following day. So I literally did a show in Atlanta one day, then flew to New York City in the middle of the night to do a second fashion show, then to go home. So I did a lot of that early on, just traveling all over, always trying to say, yes to the ones that did feel right right and just yeah just going at it just back and forth like in New York City a couple of times a month in Atlanta at least once a month so like do you have advice for people who want to present their designs and be a part of different fashion shows like whether it's locally for them in their city or to travel like like how do you find about these beauty expos or fashion expos to to be a part of like the lineup so I utilize social media a lot mm -hmm. and that was my key and go to early on as well as being there physically. So just how I mentioned, I would travel around a lot. I can't remember how I got invited to my first show. I think they um, invited me through social media and I applied. So, and that was in Philadelphia about five hours from where I'm from. So just going to Philly, that helped me because um, it, was, it introduced me to like a new audience, new community, new clients so also meeting new designers and kind of building a community with that because then after that one other designer she was like oh I know about a show in New York City happening in a couple of months are you interested so I would say just getting out there that kind of helps your networking with other designers other creatives photographers and I feel like it was key to travel but it also depends mm -hmm. on if you already live in like a big city Right, But for me, traveling was definitely the key, being that I wasn't too far from New York City. So even when I'm, say, utilizing social media, we our goal is for, like, everybody to eat. So after the show, we would always tag each other, makeup artists, hairstylists, mm. the regular stylist, photographer. And just by us tagging each other, then we have our followers going to their page. 
And then right. if they're looking for designers for their shows, then they can hit you up. So that was a big thing. And of course, my hashtags, I was able to use like New York City Design or New York City Fashion Show. So if a show is happening in that area, they can find me. And I will say another method I use, sometimes if I'm like, I don't have a show coming up soon, I really want to be in a show. I'll go to Eventbrite and I'll look up fashion shows happening and I'll see their flyers and I'll see them selling tickets for the show and I'll find their email and I'll ask them like, oh, hey, are you looking for more designers? I would love to be a part mm-hmm. of your show. So yeah, just pretty much finding what works and playing That's around with good. different methods. Yeah you, yeah, you definitely have like an incredible work ethic because like if I look on your Instagram or your TikTok, you are always somewhere making your name known and really like building those connections and relationships through social media but you're making it you know happen in real life so if people were to find you like on social media and wanted to work with you do you have like any like red flags for like customers who say oh I want to I want you to design but then they kind of don't follow through like is it like um is a red flag like uh going into your dms or or do you have like a a specific website to like schedule a call like how do you know if people are for real about your uh your service or not um deposit 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 i recently <laughs> learned that so i had to set a boundary deck because sometimes it feel weird especially mm-hmm. if it's somebody you know to say oh you need a deposit but i'm learning sometimes you have to just for like your peace and so you can be the best version of you and don't waste time a deposit is necessary and just because right. two people also don't realize what goes into creating garments and they think you can just do something really quick and it's like, well, I have to draft the pattern. The pattern, sometimes that take a day, sometimes longer, depending on how complicated. Then it's like, I have to purchase your fabric and fabric is not cheap, especially the ones that the client wants. Sometimes fabric right. can be anywhere between $49 a yard, 50, 100 a yard, or and you have some lower ones, but sometimes they want the higher ones and they don't understand that all of that is in the cost. And then if it's taking me 20 hours, I have to charge for that. Like, exactly. yes, I would say that's, that's pretty much how I know when people are serious. And I definitely, definitely accept DMs, but at the same time, I've found a system, a form that, that I have on my website. That's like the number one step to do to fill out that form. So if people take the time to fill out the form, that also helps me to see that they're serious instead of mm-hmm. just talking. Cause I have people be like, we'll be at like a dinner, fam- a dinner or something. And somebody right. throws ideals about a design they want and it's like I'm off the clock as much as I love <laughs> what to do I want to relax I want to eat I want to like enjoy so I have to explain that too a little bit like I love what I do but I need you to follow this form so we can do a proper consultation yeah so don't be any mix-ups mm-hmm. later on we can be on on the same page pretty much absolutely has it been hard trying to balance that work life balance because like you know you have to turn it off at some point like that creative mind and like live life like has that been a struggle or are you slowly like learning like what works best for you oh I would say it is a struggle like I love so much of what I do but I will say when I do take times the rest they're like okay I'm on a um, pause on fashion shows just for a little while it also feels great to just like be a normal person and sit back and Mm -hmm. watch a movie without thinking like oh, I should be designing right now because I have a bad habit of doing that. When I do, I love to draw. And even sometimes I sit down and I'm like, I should be sewing right now or I could be doing a fashion mm-hmm. illustration. So sometimes I do have a hard time turning it off or even at family gathers, I'm like, or family reunions or family vacations when I'm packing, I'm like, I have to bring it. I'm the fashion designer of the family. Like <laughs> they're expecting for me to be dressed and ready. So that be feeling like pressure a little bit and they they will definitely let me know something not together like okay fashion designer like what are you doing I'm like I want to chill like yeah but yeah sometimes I do have a hard time turning it off but at the same time I love it so I don't be um too mad sometimes when people catch me off guard like as long as they're respectful and know like when to do it and how I'm always like pretty much polite with them right have your uh have you designed anything for your family or close friends before Yes, I have. Um, family, I do. Um, friends, yes. I, and I was thinking back a couple of years ago, I actually designed my friend's wedding dress from middle school. We went to high wow. school together as well, but we were in the same class um, middle school. So that was pretty, that was pretty cool. Yeah, that's like one of my funnest memories from a friend because I haven't seen her in like years. So of course she would mm-hmm. come over like 
once or twice a week and we'll sit down and do the consultation and sketch. And I remember I was so nervous going like, I never did a wedding dress before. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. She's just like, okay, I have faith in you. We're going to figure this out together. So her attitude was like wonderful. She was like a dream client. She wasn't a bridezilla. She was so sweet. And of course it was nice to like see her again. So that was like a really fun experience. That's good. So when you do have moments of like self doubt in your creativity, like if it's like a big project, maybe like a prom design or a wedding or some type of birthday experience or whatever the occasion may be, how do you get through that like nervous or doubtful feeling so you can carry on, you know, the the project? Ooh, so I pray, read my mm-hmm. scriptures and I fast because other than that, I just be like, I can't do this. So I don't get too much as much like that anymore. And I guess because I've been doing it for some years now, I know like, okay, I was able to get through it before. God got me through it before he can get me through it again. Because I know before just being super shy, I'll be like, Mm -hmm. when it's time for fashion shows, what do I get myself into? I know I don't like to be in front of people. So why am I like volunteering to do this? Like Mm -hmm. I didn't like presentations in college. So I'm like, and that was for a grade. So I'm like, not, I don't have to do it. Why am I putting myself through this? So that used to be that used to be a little bit more often before and every so often I do have moments where I'm just like stuck but I also remember how previously when I felt stuck it just all came together so yeah I just make sure I really get into my word and just keep praying on it and fasting on it and I be mindful of what I'm listening to and watching to as I sew I would literally sit there and sew over the piece or before I go to bed Mm. I'll sew and ask God to if I'm stuck to help me show me how to construct this or show me sources that I can use to get this collection together. Or if I'm stuck on a design, I'll pray and ask him to just give me that creative flow and to give me a design to help me get through it. Oh, that's beautiful. I love to hear that. So if people haven't went to school for design or um, they don't see it in their path to go to school, do you have any like helpful tips for people who want to get into uh designing but they just need to you know use more of like their current resources like is like should they know how to sew off bed or learn like what what are some of the skills or tips that you can offer them um I think knowing how to sew is very useful because I was shocked about that I was like why would I know how to sew like I'm designing like can a seamstress sew it but it is right. useful to know like the basics just because so you can know what can be done and what can't be done. Or you can tell the scene just like, uh-uh, do it like this. So that is a good skill to have, even if you're not really advanced. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of tricks you can use. Like you can go to a thrift store, like Goodwill, and get a pair of pants and um, take the seams out so you can see how it's made and just use it as a pattern get your own fabric and redo it and follow along. And then there's a lot of um, resources now that I wish we had when I was an undergrad and grad, like, I think YouTube started becoming popular when mm-hmm. I was an undergrad, my mm-hmm. senior year, and I utilized that if I was like stuck trying to figure out what type of closure method I need or just anything, I'll look on YouTube and kind of follow along. And even how on Etsy you can purchase patterns, which is useful, oh, so you can yeah. always purchase these patterns and modify them to yours. So I was, would say if you can't go to school, you can still find ways to achieve and go after the design and it's just, just use videos to your advantage and I know some people post it on TikTok and Instagram mm-hmm. tutorials so yeah you can definitely find ways to get around it and, and even you, if you like yeah. oh, no, go ahead. if you go to like to seminars seminars and like networking events and that's useful mm-hmm. as well and take notes and really pay attention to listen to other designer stories that's good do you have a mentor in fashion or was it like your professors at school that kind of guided you so far I would say um my professors, but I also have to shout out um where I interned, Nathaniel's Originals, which is where where I'm from, um Rochester, New York, and everybody knows Nate in Rochester. Like he's a great <laughs> designer, and I interned with him, and his team was just super welcoming to me, and they gave me really good advice, like go out there, get in there for fashion shows, travel. So that's something I really like stuck with me, and so that was like a really huge influence. That's good. And so like, I know recently you were part of the Shein X collaboration and I was so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, Shantae is in Shein. Like this is like the biggest, one of the biggest um, clothing sites ever. And it's so popular. Like, can you talk about that experience and how it happened for you? Yes. And it's funny that you say that because I'm a person that's a little bit hard on myself. Like 
I have a hard time being like, okay, you did that. I'm always like, okay, what can I improve? What can I do better next time? So <laughs> it took me a minute to like realize like, dude, you're in Shein X <laughs> because it was funny. It was last year around maybe March when I got a message, I think on my LinkedIn account. And I thought it was like scam or spam. I wasn't familiar with the Shein X though. I was just like, uh, like, yeah, I'm not about to trick me. And then mm. later on, I got an inbox in my email. And I'm like, okay, this might be real. They're calling me by name. They know that I'm a, that I'm a designer. So maybe this is real. So I started looking it up on Google. And I'm like, oh, I think this might be real. And I guess mm. what really like brought it all together for me, that same day, I got on Facebook and I saw another designer friend of mine just announced mm. her collection release with Shein. So that's what I was like, okay, this is real. Let me hurry up and respond back to the email. Hopefully it's not too <laughs> late. So that was pretty, it was pretty cool. And the process was pretty easy for me because I went to graduate school at SCAD and a, a lot of what we had to do with like tech packs, it mirrored what we needed for our Shein X collection. So with the sketching, tech packs, illustrations, it was basically the same method. So that part was pretty much a breeze for me. And I even had tons of sketches from SCAD that I never used. I was like, okay, I'll take it make it a little bit more modern and modify it a little bit. And then I'll say the wait was the longest because I turned it in in about, I think at the beginning of June and just wait and wait and wait in. Oh, and wow, then yeah. finally, yeah, <laughs> it was time to like approve the samples. And then I, um, it, went, it actually went live at like midnight or something, but I didn't see it till the next morning. So yeah, they told me a little bit in um, advance. So of course I told like a few people, but I was waiting like to really make the announcement. So it was it's been a great experience and even i will say so my first time creating a vision board was that time we were on zoom together a couple of years ago maybe like not that long ago two years ago mm -hmm. so that was my first time and then my second vision board i made at the end of 2020 for 2020 or 2021 for 2022 and i had an image of my garments being mass produced because i saw like all mm -hmm. of the stuff on my etsy and it's crazy because I didn't piece it together. Like, wow, my garments are being mass produced by Shein. And it's like, and it's not even under, it's not just on my website, which is the amazing thing. Like it's introducing me to a whole nother group of people. Wow. I've been coming across reviews on YouTube, video reviews. And sometimes I see influencers wearing my stuff on Instagram. So it's, it's really been a great experience. Something I can never imagine. Something I'm still like taking in. Like for the, I just learned a couple of weeks ago, like I can tag my products on Instagram and I didn't know I could do that from she and X so that was really cool <laughs> that is amazing and so um really quickly like with that she and opportunity um and people buying your clothes from she and like how do you have to design all of the outfits and the sizing like before it get it went live or are you making those um sizes and the designs in real time like if someone places an order are you creating it in that moment or how does that work no so I did most of my work at the beginning so now okay. I kind of get to like sit back and chill while the orders take place so yeah during that first beginning steps through like maybe May to June that's when I was like really um given that yeah we had to give step-by-step -step direction for their team of seamstress which is also mm -hmm. great I'm so glad I don't have to sew every piece so we gave them steps and then we also created like a sizing chart for them and pretty much had them um, a little bit of perimeters to stay around their sizing chart so yeah Oh, that's awesome. Do you accept like virtual um, clients who want to work with you, but they're not near you to like for like an in-person fitting? Like how, what would they have to present to you if they wanted to just get like a custom design virtually? Oh, um, I always ask for a very detailed measurements, like yeah, pretty much measurements all around and just the in-depth consultation. And of course we do it in advance. That way I can send a little early just in case it needs to make some alterations and they send it back yeah. and we can get it done that way. Oh, that's well, cool. that's good to know. And then it's all on your website, of course. And I'll make sure to link all your socials mm -hmm. and your website within this description of the podcast. But um, I know like um, just overall with you taking it in that you have the she and X opportunities have more opportunities came from that one experience or, or really has it opened up like your social media network from that she and collaboration? I would say a little bit of both, like the love I received on social media, I wasn't expecting. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty cool. And 
even at fashion shows like the one you went to, I think when I was concluding, I read, when they were introducing me, they like announced my collection. I wasn't expecting that. I didn't even know they yeah. knew I had a collection with she and next. So I'm like, oh, well, this is a big deal. And so that's pretty cool to meet other um, creatives. And sometimes mm-hmm. the photographers tag me, they'll say like, oh, most recently known for a collection with she and X. So that's been great as well as some of the fashion shows I've been getting invited to lately. So yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely been wonderful. That's beautiful. And so like to um, wrap up our conversation, a part of every show, I ask guests to give me two songs that best represent their personality because I have a music playlist that accompanies the show. And so it's so so far it has been very hard for people to narrow down two songs that they love. But even if it's an album or a certain artist, do you have any favorites? I do. So I mentioned Diana Ross and TLC, so I'll stick with those. And I'll say for Diana Ross, her theme song to Mahogany, one oh, of my, yeah. yes. <laughs> I love that. And I would say the second one will be TLC, I'm Pretty. Oh, oh those are perfect for the po- uh, the pocket podcast playlist. Um, Would you, like, is TLC, like, your dream client to work with or design for? Like, which is TLC pretty much like that would be like the top it's funny TLC and Diana Ross like those Ooh. two are the top like I'm here if they ever need a designer assistant di- designers anything if somebody that's seen their clothes I'm here <laughs> like, those absolutely are we're gonna we're gonna speak it it's it, now it's gonna be in this podcast space and right. social media so it can happen friend it can definitely, definitely. happen <laughs> absolutely well I just want to thank you so much for joining the green light with Shayla Needs. I really appreciate you saying yes and I'm so glad that to see your shine and your winning and you're really like taking your designs to the next level and I just Thank I'm just you. so glad and I pray that your collections and your work just keeps elevating and like the right eyes are placed on you so that you can really like you know be be that top designer that I'm seeing on New York Fashion Week or London Fashion Week or thank Paris you. and all that <laughs> absolutely I really appreciate that and thank you for having me If you love today's guest and our green light combo, please tell someone, your mama, daddy, cousin, sister, brother, auntie, uncle about the show and we're going to look out for the next episode.